Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the paleo or primal or paleolithic diet, um, whatever you want to call it. So this is kind of a like buzzword diet or kind of can seem like a fad diet, but I'm just going to be honest with you and kind of explain my experience with the diet. And I hate the word diet to begin with, but diet is just a way of eating. So I'm going to use that one the way it's supposed to be used but this isn't just like a fad diet where you do it for 30 days and then kind of just quit and then go back to how you were eating before it's kind of just kind of becomes the way that you you eat every day and just kind of a way of life so um, I'm kind of just going to explain what the diet is what it means kind of what we do um, different ideas as far as cooking and just kind of give you a quick rundown and see if um, you can learn something from it and possibly try it, which would be great. I do recommend this diet for anyone and everyone. Even people who don't think they have symptoms or are aware of their symptoms, I feel that this diet could help them immensely. So um, I'm excited to talk to you guys about it. Basically, the Paleolithic or Primal Diet um, it's essentially an anti-inflammatory diet that goes back to the Paleolithic era. So this is kind of like your hunter-gatherers um, running from beasts um, and kind of producing their own food. So they know exactly where it's coming from. They kind of eat with the seasons. So this was before like the production of processed foods. This is before the whole agricultural um, like shift. So any genetically modified foods, they just, they didn't have them. They just simply didn't have them. So again, they did eat with the seasons and um, ate way more produce than we do now. These humans tended to be leaner, more fit, healthier, stronger, and they ate just a lot more produce, fiber, protein, um, essential fatty acids, um, just a lot less junk in general just because they simply didn't have it. And they didn't have perfect health though, so a lot of people kind of dip into this with the whole primal thing, but obviously there was like infectious disease out there, there was parasites, and a lot of that had to do with just simple hygiene, and during those times they just didn't have it. So they didn't live the super long lives. Um, most of the time they're running from beasts and in fight or flight, so not saying it was the ideal uh, experience, but they did get a lot right with their diet. So this diet tends to be anti-inflammatory, and what I mean by that is systemically. So your body is not having a difficult time breaking down food that it's not supposed to be consuming. So in turn, your digestion is great. Um, your inflammation is then low. So if your body is constantly being fed foods that it doesn't recognize or it doesn't respond well to, so like these are like allergy foods or um, sensitivities or whatever you want to call it, then your body kind of starts rejecting in a sense. So it begins fighting off whatever you put in your body, almost like a cold. So like the foreign invader would be the food that you're eating. but. Um, so your body kind of starts fighting against itself, so systemically it kind of creates chaos across the body. And that's when you can have symptoms that are super widespread. This can be as simple as headaches or acne or breakouts to wrist pain, elbow pain, whatever. Um, all the way up to autoimmune conditions, so more serious ones like ulcerative colitis or di diverticulosis, for example. Okay, so what does this diet actually look like? Um, it is a whole foods based diet, so it's got minimal ingredients, it is a lot of high quality meats, eggs, fish, uh, lots of vegetables, some starchy vegetables like um, sweet potatoes or turnips, things like that. Fruit, nuts, and seeds are also on this diet, and it does not allow you to have gluten, dairy, or soy. So um, I'll kind of tap on the dairy later. Some dairy is allowed if you can handle it, but a lot of people can't, especially at first. It's a good idea to just completely take it out of your diet and bring it back in and see if you can handle it. So this diet is definitely low in sugar just by default. Obviously all those foods besides the fruit is um, pretty low in sugar. So you can see where that would benefit you already. 
Um, fruit is recommended on a minimal intake just because of the sugar content. Alcohol and sugar are not beneficial at all during this diet, especially at first. Um, it should not be consumed regularly. And this is kind of just the backbone of the diet. So there's no processed foods on this diet. This isn't something you go and buy at the store and buy like paleo pancakes or paleo muffins. I mean, those things do exist and there's definitely a time and a place for those things. But at first it's really good to just get to the foundation of the diet and just kind of use those whole foods and, and go from there. There are a variety of ways to cook these foods um, in different ways that are super tasty. They're really simple and easy to make. Um, we tend to make a lot of the same meals, but we just kind of switch up our meat and our vegetables and it's just easy for us and we know we're getting quality nutrition and it's kind of like a no-brainer for us. But it definitely takes some dedication. Um, there's prep time, there, you're going to be shopping more frequently, and it's something that you need to know up front. So a lot of people are just, they don't want to put in the work, but, but honestly, what's more important than your health? And you just save yourself so much time down the road by preventing illnesses. So I really think it's important to prepare, and you may have to shop a few times a week. We, we shop a few times a week. Um, we do frequent different stores, so that probably also causes um, more trips. But we do shop a few times a week, especially for good quality produce. You do need to make sure it's fresh and get it more often. Okay, so how do you even start uh, going about trying this diet? So right away, you want to remove dairy and gluten from your diet. Um, you can do this as quickly as you need to or slowly. It's kind of can be a transitional period if you need to. Some people are just cold turkey and they just dive in and do it. Um, some people need a little bit more time. Either way, you'll get to where you need to be eventually. And sometimes along the way, if you do it more slowly, you have more time to learn and educate yourself about the process. However, I totally get the all or nothing people and that works too. So. Um, what you want to do is remove gluten and dairy from your diet. Now, if this means just to start, you do kind of transition to like the paleo cereals or the paleo pancakes or whatever the product is just to get gluten out of your diet, go for it. That's fine. Um, eventually, I think you'll come to evolve to learn. It's really about just like a whole food rather than like a paleo pancake. You'll just... Um, find different ways to eat using like whole foods instead of just imitation foods, like paleo versions of unhealthy foods. Pancakes are still pancakes, whether they're paleo or not. So um, I think you'll learn that down the road, but just to start, just remove gluten and same with dairy. So you have to read labels. Labels are huge. If you're not comfortable reading labels, you kind of have to be after this. So you're always going to Look at your labels and read your ingredients. Um, more than even the calories or the fat or the carbs, you can look at that later and we can talk about um, paleo being a generally low carb diet just by nature. But right now, I just want you focusing on the ingredients. So you need to make sure there's absolutely no wheat or gluten in the product. Um, a lot of products are advertised now as gluten free, so that does help you but um, you definitely need to read the ingredients. Same with dairy. Uh, dairy is even trickier just because there can be whey in something or um, just like a milk protein or lactose. So you need to make sure it's absolutely dairy free. So some people will try and do this diet and they're not, their symptoms aren't getting better or they're not really seeing the results that they expected. And that's because they have hidden sources of dairy or they have, they're not really truly gluten free or they're not truly dairy free. So you have to look at labels. So that's my little rant about labels. But so you wanna start there and just removing those two things alone I can guarantee you, you will feel so much better. So I kind of start people on like a 30 day thing. Um, some people say 21 days is enough. However, 30 days is even kind of short, but I guarantee you'll feel um, less bloated. Your skin will look better. You'll feel better. You'll have more energy and you'll just feel better in general. And I can't, I don't know your specific symptoms and you might not even know your specific symptoms, but you will afterwards. You'll realize, wow, I 
don't feel like this anymore or I haven't had a headache in weeks or I just feel better. Okay, so after you remove those two items, you're like, okay, well, what's left? Like meat, the veggies, and nuts and seeds. There's so many meals you can make with those with those items. So any meat you're gonna do, we do a lot of um, grass-fed beef. So it does need to be high quality meats. You, ideally, you'd like to know where your meat came from so you can buy from a local farm if you're if you have you know contacts for that. If not, um, general grocery stores do have high quality meats. Um, you'll just want to make sure they're grass fed or organic if you can. And they definitely have a different nutritional profile. So rather than buying just the standard like conventional farming horrible meat, you want to buy the high quality meat and your body will thank you for sure. So Meats, you can buy, I mean, I'm talking beef, chicken, turkey, any, I mean, pork, whatever you want, um, any meat, any eggs, if you handle eggs, some people don't tolerate eggs and that's fine, you don't have to eat them. I don't tolerate eggs, so I don't eat them, which is kind of like a huge staple in the paleo diet, but they just don't work for me. Um, and then fish, fish is great. You want to make sure you get wild caught. Um, you don't want farm produced fish. It's just, again, it's kind of a quality standard. So wild caught is best for fish. And I mean, places like Costco, and I don't know what grocery stores you have by you, but like your local grocery store, you should be able to find a good alternative. Trader Joe's has a couple good um, fish products as well. So you can look into that, Whole Foods, places, places like that, or your, like your local specialty stores will have some good products for you. So any meat, any eggs, um, of course, you want higher quality eggs as well, so like the large um, organic cage-free would be best. And fruits, fruits you don't want to go crazy on them just because of the sugar content, but I'm not going to get intense about that right now. If you're eating cups and cups of fruit, it might be a problem, but just at first, um, organic is best, same with your vegetables, they're just cleaner. Um, I know not everybody has the budget for it, and we certainly don't either, but just buy buy what you can. If not, try and buy locally and just wash your fruits and vegetables really well. Um, really good fruits are berries, so definitely incorporate berries into your diet if you're going to do fruits. And your nuts and your seeds, really no nut or seed is bad. If I had to pick one, peanuts are not great. So look for almonds, or if you're gonna do like a butter, do like almond butter or sunflower seed butter or something like that. Peanuts, peanuts can kind of act um, like a toxin for some people, so just, just don't do peanut butter. Almond butter is just as tasty, so just do that. Okay, so I kind of explained the ingredients or the foods that are allowed on the diet, and basically you're just gonna take these items and cook them any way you want. So for example, I'm just gonna give one example and then I can answer questions if you guys have them in the comments later. But so we cook a lot of meat. So we'll just do like grass fed burgers and literally take a pound of beef, make how many burgers, whatever size you want. We generally do like four burgers, jumbo burgers, and just put them on the stove top and cook them on a skillet and then take a vegetable. Um, we do, so like zucchini, make, you know, cut up some zucchini, put it on a, um, like a baking sheet, and use some coconut oil, olive oil, and cut them up any way you want. So you could just slice them this way and kind of put them on um, the baking sheet and then just bake those by themselves. Um, generally it's about 15 minutes each 15 minutes each side at about 450 degrees and 15 minutes flip them 15 minutes and they'll be delicious um, some salt on it obviously to taste or spice however you'd like and then um, like a starchy vegetable you could do a sweet potato or turnips or yellow squash or butternut squash or so you kind of get a little bit um, creative with these and they might be vegetables you haven't really had before sweet potatoes are pretty common and I love them so I can eat them every day, but you can put whatever vegetable you want. Or I mean, you don't have to do like a starchy vegetable, but I feel that I, I feel that I feel more 
uh, full or satiated after a meal if I do have a little bit of carbs with it. So I do like a sweet potato and you can bake those any way you want, a baked sweet potato or fries or whatever. Um, again, coconut oil or olive oil are probably your two best oils to cook with and then spice those however you want. And you can do your burger up fancy or you can just literally eat her, just a burger with some toppings on it. Um, you can do like a lettuce wrap or whatever you want to do, but um, we do that meal a lot. And then we switch out our vegetables. So then we might do broccoli or green beans or just something else. And then again, we swap out the other veggie and we can swap out the meat and do um, pork chops or chicken thighs or whatever kind of meat that you want. So it's really up to you. It seems daunting at first and it might be a couple fails when you first start cooking, but after a while, you just get the hang of it and you'll just feel fulfilled after your meals. So that's just kind of one example. But again, I can give you lots of examples of how to cook, what to cook, how long to cook it. So just let me know if you need help with that. I just want to explain how it's helped me. So um, for years and years, I had horrible symptoms, horrible stomach pains. I've been to many, many doctors and have been misdiagnosed a lot with IBS or ulcers or who knows what, but it was never celiac disease and it was never an autoimmune condition and it was never a food allergy. It was never what it actually was. And once, I think I was 21-ish, um, so now it's been like eight years, I have figured it out. And it was a lot of trial and error and lab work and all of that, but short, long story short, um, I had horrible symptoms, um, just to name a few, I had horrible, horrible skin, um, horrible uh, cystic acne, horrible periods, horrible cramps, horrible stomach pains in general, anytime I ate, um, anytime I ate I would feel bloated, and I ate healthy, um, at the time I was, I did sports, I tried to eat healthy, I ate whole grain, everything, I ate low fat dairy, I ate Greek yogurt, I ate everything that I thought I was supposed to be eating to be healthy, and I wasn't. I was I was sick every single day. My stomach hurt. It was bloated where it looked like I was six months pregnant. Um, I had horrible headaches. Um, my skin was red. It was inflamed. And these are just, I didn't even prepare for this. These are just symptoms off the top of my head, but I had horrible symptoms. So. After I started eating this way, and I went the slower route, so I started eating the gluten-free cereals and the gluten-free this and gluten-free that, um, and over a few years, I kind of really focused in on just like whole foods, but it helped me so much immediately. And I'm not guaranteeing everybody's gonna lose weight or whatever, but a lot of people do. It's anti-inflammatory. Your body just is not gonna hold on to that inflammation. Um, dairy was very, very um, hormone disrupting for me so I, I tended to especially around my period I tended to bloat and I just had so much like water on me that once I removed these items from my diet that my body just could not tolerate everything just kind of fell into place I felt felt so much better I didn't need to sleep and take naps every single day after I got 10 hours of sleep um, you just you shouldn't feel that way I mean if you're a mom and you have a baby you probably feel that way but most people shouldn't feel that way. And so I just felt so much better and my skin got so much better. I, I honestly, I wish I had like a video or a picture. If I find one, I maybe insert it here, but a picture of what my skin used to look like. It was horrible, um, painful, bumpy, red, itchy. I almost went on Accutane. I tried everything. So thankfully I didn't but this diet helped me so much so again i can kind of touch on things it helped me with in general in the comments if you have any um this video is already long enough but it helped me so much and i know if you're if you're having any kind of these symptoms and you just you just want to feel good you will try anything and you'll get to a point where you're willing to try anything to feel better and this does take a little bit of work but it's so worth it and i'll answer any questions that you have if you want to um, direct message me, um, find me on Instagram, or you can email me, and I'll put my email below as well. 
and I'd love to answer any questions that you have. Okay, and last I do have a resource for you. When I started looking into paleo, I really, um, I googled everything and I found kind of like the father of paleo and you probably have heard of him if you're into paleo, but Rob Wolf has taught me so much. Um, he has a book called The Paleo Solution. It was like his original book about the paleo diet and it's great. It has all the sciencey stuff if you want to learn why um, the research behind it, but it also just has like this is what you need to do. If you're the kind of person that just like, I'll just do it, I don't care what it's about, I'm gonna do it because I wanna look good or feel good or whatever it is. Um, but it's a very well-rounded book and I learned so much from that. I've lent it to many, many people and it can help you immensely. So he also has a podcast um, and I think it's just called The Paleo Solution as well. Just look up Rob Wolf, but his podcast he's had for years and I've learned so much from that. If you like podcasts, that's great as well. There's a million paleo podcasts out there. So um, there's paleo for women. There's a bunch of different ones that you can look into, but Rob Wolf, you need to look into. Um, another um, resource is Chris Cresser. Look into Chris Cresser. You can just Google him. Any of his resources are great. And I can give you a bunch more, but start there. I'm done preaching and I'm starving. So I'm actually gonna go eat some food, but Thanks for listening. If you have any specific questions or I didn't cover something or you're a little confused about something, let me know. I've talked for way too long and I could talk all day about this. So I actually made PowerPoints about this. So super nerdy about it. Um, but let me know if you need anything and I think my next video is going to be on breastfeeding. So just a heads up, I got some inquiries about breastfeeding. So I'm going to kind of give like my first time mom tips, tricks, what it felt like, what I thought it was going to be like, is it great, is it hard, all of those things. So um, I'll probably do that one in a week or two. So thanks for watching guys. Bye.